For the first time in three decades, we came together to overcome the relentless opposition from the gun lobby, gun manufacturers, and so many politicians opposing common sense gun legislation. And we beat them. That was President Biden, September 22nd, 2023, announcing the creation of the first ever White House Office of Gun Violence Prevention. And here's a member of Congress speaking in the House a decade earlier. I have defended the Second Amendment more than any member of this body. And I am a past member of the uh, board of directors of NRA and a life member of that body. You heard that congressman on June 28, 2012, establishing his credentials with the National Rifle Association. Past NRA board member, life member of the NRA, defender of the Second Amendment. Obviously a Republican, right? Nope. Would you believe a Democrat? Yes, indeed. As we remember in this episode of the C-SPAN podcast, The Weekly, it was Democratic Congressman from Michigan, John Dingell. Congressman John Dingell is remembered for many things. Powerful chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee, the record for longest serving member of Congress in American history. He represented Michigan for more than 59 years, serving in the House at the same time as 11 presidents, a quarter of all presidents, the most of any representative. And he was also the longest-serving dean of the House from 1995 to 2015. And his legacy included advocacy for many policy issues, including support for gun owners. In late July 2023, the New York Times ran an article headlined, Over Decades, a Small Group of Legislators, Led by a Prominent Democrat, Pushed the Gun Lobby to Help Transform the Law, the Courts, and Views on the Second Amendment. Reporter Mike McIntyre wrote about John Dingell. He was not just a politician. He simultaneously sat on the NRA's board of directors, positioning him to influence firearms policy, as well as the private lobbying force responsible for shaping it. Here's how former NRA executive director Chris Cox described Congressman Dingell when he introduced him in September 2007 at an NRA convention. Americans know our next speaker as a tenacious advocate. He's the Dean of the House for having served the longest tenure in the 435 member body. His history with the NRA is legendary as well. Going back to 1975, when he worked hand in hand with Harlan Carter to form the Institute for Legislative Action. He also served several terms on NRA's board of directors. John Dingell is also a forceful voice for hunters. He is the chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee where his years of experience as an avid conservationist and outdoorsman helped shape national environmental policy. He is a senior member of the Migratory Bird Conservation Commission, and he successfully passed legislation to create North America's first international wildlife refuge, protecting thousands of acres of natural habitat in southeast Michigan and Canada. Please give a warm round of applause for a longtime visionary, statesman, and friend of the National Rifle Association, Chairman John Dingell. And here's what John Dingell told that NRA convention. I hear that uh, we are talking about mainstream values, and so are others. And I'm here to agree with you that we in the NRA best exemplify the mainstream values of this country. We believe in conservation. We believe in hunting and fishing, enjoying the outdoors. We're patriots. We serve our country in time of war. And we protect the great constitutional rights, all of them, including and especially the Second Amendment. I want to tell you that we are a success and you are a success because of what it is you do and what you have done. I want to say that this is a very effective organization because of the ideal, the loyalty, and the dedication of its membership, and because of the extraordinary leadership that we have from people like Chris Cox and Wayne LaPierre and the other officers. Also speaking, Arizona Senator and, at the time, Republican presidential candidate, John McCain. Democratic presidential candidates have learned something since 2000. They don't talk about their plans for gun control. They pose for the cameras in camouflage, but that's all they're doing is posing. Just because they don't talk about gun control doesn't mean 
They don't want gun control. Let's be clear. If the Democrat candidates were elected president, they will go after the rights of law-abiding gun owners, just as Bill Clinton did when he was president. MoveOn.org, which seems to be calling the shots in the Democratic Party these days, will have more influence on gun control in the Oval Office, not John Dingell. Senator McCain mentioned Bill Clinton. So let's hear former President Clinton talk about John Dingell. On February 10, 2009, a ceremony was held for Congressman Dingell in the Capitol's Statuary Hall. First elected to Congress in 1955, the next day he would officially become the longest-serving member. On February 11, 2009, Congressman Dingell began his 19,420th day serving in the House of Representatives. Among the ceremony speakers, Bill Clinton. You remember the time we went duck hunting? I do. You killed the only duck. Yeah, so John takes me duck hunting, and he's convinced, since everybody else in the NRA hates my guts, that I probably doesn't know one end of a shotgun from another. And I'm up to my ears in the assault weapons ban and the, and the, you know, the Brady Bill and all that. So we go out, and, and uh, the ducks were not plentiful that day on the eastern shore, but we got one, and he tells everybody, I got it. All I know is three people shot at it, and it went down. <laughs> But I took credit for it. And he looked at me and said, you just don't understand. He said, even if you're right on these issues, look at you. Nobody believes you're going to take their gun away. Just listen to the way you talk. You don't understand. Nobody else can get away with this but you. You can't do this. <laughs> it was instructive. Another John Dingell hunting story, this time from a Republican, former Secretary of State Jim Baker. From a video that played in October 2005 at a tribute marking his 50 years in the U.S. House. John had this rather, uh, rather uh, newfangled weapon that he brought down, and, and he shot a turkey with it. And uh, the recoil uh, of the scope caught him in the eye, and he came home with a, with a big black eye. He came home with a turkey, but he also came home with a black eye. A different James Baker appeared on C-SPAN's Washington Journal on June 16, 1999, NRA lobbyist James Baker, and he reacted to a Democratic congressman quoted in that day's USA Today. Congressman Jim Moran, a Democrat here in the Virginia area, says today of Congressman, his colleague, Congressman John Dingell, that he's, quote, doing the NRA's bidding for them. Well, I think Congressman Moran is obviously upset that there are Democrats that don't believe in gun control. Uh, there, has been a, there has been a concerted effort uh, on the part of some to make this a partisan issue, uh, as though Republicans were the only ones uh, that wanted to protect individuals' rights to own firearms. In fact, that's not the case, and I think Congressman Moran is running headlong into, into that reality. And if he'd stop reading the papers and start talking to people around the country, he would have known that beforehand. Here's John Dingell versus another Democrat. July 27, 2002. Guns came up during a debate for Michigan's 16th Congressional District. Representative Dingell debated fellow Representative Lynn Rivers, also an incumbent Democrat. The Congressional District was merged following redistricting based on the 2000 census. As a matter of fact, I voted against the Brady Bill, but I also supported the instant check system. And I have worked hard to see to it that the instant check system works. I have not only sponsored legislation, which has just been reported out of the Judiciary Committee in the House this week on this matter, but I also have supported and have worked hard to make the Attorney General enforce the gun laws as they should be enforced. Now, I would note one thing more, which is important. The issue of firearms ownership is not a gun issue. It is a crime issue. And I would note to you a couple of facts. The first of which is that keeping guns out of the hands of criminals is an important national purpose. Protecting the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens is another very important purpose. Seeing to it that the law is properly enforced is a very important national purpose. Later that year, fear in the D.C. metro region. A sniper was randomly shooting and killing people, terrorizing the community. On October 15, 2002, the Beltway sniper was still on the loose. Nine innocent victims had died and two people had been critically injured. 
Also that day, the House debated a resolution that would close a loophole in the National Instant Background Check System for gun purchases. The resolution was supported by both the NRA and gun control advocates. Here are floor remarks by Congressman John Dingell. I would note that the legislation is really very simple. It first of all protects the Second Amendment rights of the people of this country. And that is, was one of the criteria and tests that my good friends at the NRA, of which I am a very happy and proud member, provided our support for the undertaking. It is so legislation then which protects the basic rights of the American people to own and use firearms for legitimate and responsible hunting, fishing, conservation purposes and defense purposes. President George H.W. Bush died on November 18, 2018. A few days later, on December 5th, John Dingell, at that point retired from Congress, called into C-SPAN's Washington Journal to discuss his friendship with President Bush, and he talked hunting and gun safety. We, we hunted together. We fished together. I had, I had all kinds of Republicans that I took hunting and fishing. The only ones I didn't take were those who were not comfortable and not careful. And they didn't go because they were a danger and a threat. I won't tell you who they were, but I will tell you that we have to see to it that safety is observed in, in, in that kind of thing. Two months after he called into C-SPAN, in February 2019, John Dingle died. His wife, Debbie Dingle, now occupies his old house seat. The New York Times article we opened with calls Congresswoman Dingell a proponent of stronger gun laws and a gun control advocate. In April 2019, Representative Debbie Dingell spoke with C-SPAN Radio about her late husband and the NRA. He was on the board of the NRA. I'll be very blunt about that. And he loved to hunt and fish. And, you know, everybody knew the high holy days were in October when he headed out west to hunt. Uh, He... The, the outdoors, he founded the Wildlife Refuge, the first international wildlife refuge in this country, because he knew the importance of protecting our natural resources. And now, a bonus clip. We'll let a C-SPAN caller have the last word. Congressman John Dingell appeared on a C-SPAN call-in program seven times. On June 30th, 1999, on Washington Journal, he got this call on the conservative line from Erie, Pennsylvania. Yes, Cong- Congressman Dingell. Good morning. I'm um, glad to talk to somebody that's uh, a Democrat that actually sounds like he's somewhat pro-gun. That's it for this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly. A reminder, you could do your own searches in the C-SPAN video library. Just go to cspan.org and use the search bar on top. There's much more to learn about Congressman John Dingell. In fact, there are over 900 videos in the C-SPAN archives featuring him, going back 40 years to 1983. And so far, 264 videos with Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. Thanks for listening and happy searching.